Okay, today's process uh, video is about dimensional analysis, and this is used a lot in chemistry and used a lot um, in formal sciences, and it's a very good way to convert between units. So especially here in the United States, when we have um, the customary system versus other places that have the metric system, it's good to be able to do to go from one to the other. Um, so the, the way that this works is that we know that anything multiplied by one is the same. We haven't changed the identity of the starting value by multiplying by one. So for instance, if we said something like this, if we said, um, 16 uh, times 1, but we made 1 look like this, 16 over 16, which I've circled right here is equivalent to 1. And when we do this, we say here and here cancels cancels, so when we do the final multiplication, we still end up with 16. So we multiply by 1, and it came out the exact same thing. Um, also, when we multiply fractions, we love this because remember that we cross-simplify. So if it was just numbers, and we see 4 over 1, and then we look and we see 27 over 9, divide it by 9, divide it by 9, we ended up with a very shorter version of what it could have been. Um, sometimes they will totally cancel out. For instance, 5 over 5 is just simplifies down to 1. And then sometimes we can get it smaller, but not quite all the way down to 1. So for instance, negative 44 over 11, divide both by uh, 11, we end up with negative 4 over 1. So very quick review on how to cross simplify. Now we're applying that exact same concept to units. So units are very, 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 very important. You're using that to guide you. It tells you when we've gone far enough to find our answer. So with the first example, this is a very basic dimensional analysis because all we're doing is converting 12 years into days. And you think, well, I don't really need a process because all I do is multiply the number of years by how many days in a year, which is 365. So 12 times 365 is my answer. So here's how the process is going to look. 12 years isn't a, a rate, but we want to make it look like a fraction. So what do we do? We put it over 1. And then we want to convert it to days. So if I'm going to physically cancel out the units of years, I have to put it on the bottom because years is going to cancel out by putting them on the top and the bottom. And so this right here is known as a conversion factor. The conversion factor is going to be equal to 1 because I can multiply by 1 and not change my starting value. So we think, is there a conversion factor that goes from days to years? And some of these you should memorize, like that one. There are 365 days in one year. Years cancels out. Once I'm left with only the thing that I was trying to find, I'm done. So I can go ahead and multiply. 12 times 365 is my solution. And I think it comes out to 4,380 days. You're definitely going to need a calculator for this because sometimes we can use one conversion factor like this and get my answer, but where we're going you're going to have many, many, many steps in the way. So it's possible that we have four different conversion factors before we get everything to cancel out. Okay. Um, example two, it says convert 150 pounds to, to kilograms. So part of what we need to know is what are the abbreviations for these things. Pounds is LB and kilograms is a KG. You're going to be given a chart that has all of your conversion uh, factors listed on them. So this is going to be a reference. Make sure that you um, use this and know how to navigate it. So if you're going between the different systems, you're going to look at the top, and it's broken down by the length, uh, units of weight, and then capacity is how much something holds. And then if you're in the same systems, it's a little bit easier here. So we're looking at pounds to kilograms, so that's between systems, and it's a measurement of weight. So I look, and I see that in one kilo, uh, kilogram, it is 2.2046 pounds. So I think about this, and I set it up 150 pounds over one, and I want it to be kilograms. So for me to get pounds to cancel out, I've got to put it on the bottom. And there is a factor that goes straight to kilograms. So I look at it again, and I say in one kilogram, so one kilogram, it's 2.2046 pounds. So my pounds cancel out. The thing that I'm left, over with, left with is kilograms. So I know that I'm done. Once the only unit showing is the thing that I'm trying to find, we can stop and just do the math. So now this is multiplication. So 150 times 1 divided by this right here. So this would be a calculator issue. 150 divided by 2.2046. And there's your answer. If we need to, um, we would tell you how to round it. Um, so that will say it, to the nearest hundredth is 
0.04 about kilograms. Okay. So this is the basic uh, dimensional analysis. Sometimes we can uh, make it slightly more complicated by starting with a rate instead of simply something over one. For instance, in example three, we have 55 miles per kilometer, and now we're changing miles to feet and hours per, oh, sorry, miles per hour, hours to seconds. So I start with 55 miles. Now I have a different unit on the bottom per one hour. So we have to work in conversion two ways. You can start with whatever order you want. You can get rid of the miles first or the hours first. For me, because I know the unit of time without having to look it up, I'm going to convert the hours to seconds. So for me to get hours to cancel, notice that here hours is on the bottom. So for me to cancel it, I need to line it up like so. If you know how many seconds are in an hour, you can go for it. Um, if you don't, you can work through other steps. So in one hour, there are 60 minutes. Cancel those units before you move on. And then I still haven't gotten all the way to seconds yet, so I have to go through another conversion factor. For me to get minutes to cancel out, we have to put it on the top. And then we're going from minutes to seconds. So in one minute, there are 60 seconds. So notice that this is equivalent to one. So in one minute, there are 60 seconds. So I'm just multiplying it again by one. Minutes is gone. So now I've addressed the time. I've gotten it to where it needs to be. Now I'm going to address the distance. And I'm going to do it all in one big long string of multiplication. So if I'm going to get miles to cancel out, I've got to put miles on the bottom. And I'm converting miles to feet. So if you need to look at your chart, I'm looking for a measurement of distance. Miles to feet looks like it's in the same customary uh, system. So in one mile, there are 5,280 feet. So in one mile, notice where I put the one, one mile is 5,280 feet. So again, I can cross simplify anywhere. They don't have to be next to each other as long as one's on the top and one's on the bottom. So once the only thing showing are the units that I'm looking for, I could stop. So I have feet over seconds. Now I'm going to go ahead and do my math. So multiply the numerators together. 55 times 1 times 1 times 5,280. I think is this big old long number here. You can check it in a calculator. And that's feet. And then on the bottom, 1 times 60 times 60 times 1. That's 3,600 seconds. But again, I don't want for 3,600 seconds. I want per 1. So I divide the top by the bottom. And you get something like 80 and 2 thirds feet per second. So we started with the rate, and we ended up with the rate. Um, now for the second one, convert 60 miles per hour to yards per minute. So I start with the rate, 60 miles over 1 hour, and I need to go to yards per minute. So I'm going to address the time again. So hours is on the top to get it to cancel. And I can go through minutes. So in 1 hour, there are 60 minutes. Uh, so this I've taken care of. Now i got to convert miles to yards. So for me to get rid of miles, I need to put it on the bottom. And we're going to look to see if there is a yards to miles conversion. And there it is. In one mile, there's 1760 yards. So 1760 yards in one mile. Miles cancel out leaves me yards and minutes, what I'm looking for, so we can stop. So notice we had to go through many steps up here. This one was just three. So then I can multiply 60 by 1760. 60 times 1760 gives me this number on the top, and that's how many yards there are. And then on the bottom, I've just got 60 minutes. So to find the unit rate per one minute, I divide the top by the bottom. So I'm going to say that divided by 60. And we have now 1760 yards per minute. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a couple to try on your own. So you need a calculator and you need to make sure that you're canceling out your units before you do your math, uh, and then we'll talk about them. So in do now number one, for A, I want you to convert 89.3 ounces to grams, and then in B, convert 740 meters per minute to miles per hour. So do it on your own, and then we'll discuss the strategy. Okay, so for A, this isn't a rate starting off, so we have 89.3 ounces, it's the OZ, and we'll put it over one, and we need to go to grams. So ounces to grams, it looks like we could use this one, or we can use this one. If you're using the top, 
that would be one gram is 0 0.0353 ounces, 0 0.0353 ounces. So the ounces, ounces cancel out, out. The only thing we're left with is grams, which is what we're trying to find. So essentially you're dividing 89.3 by this number here. So 89.3 divided by 0 0.0353. Should be this, so we'll round it to the nearest hundredth. And on your classwork and your homeworks, so we're going to tell you how to round this because everything is these decimals that are rounded in the first place. So about this many grams. And the second one is a rate, so we have to, to convert two different units. So there's your abbreviation for meters, and a minute is MIN. So meters is 1M, uh, time is MIN. So to miles per hour. So again, minutes and hours. You could have started with the distance if you wanted to. It doesn't matter because of that community property of multiplication. So there are 60 minutes and one hour. Cancel, cancel. And then I'm going to go after the meters to miles. So we're going to look and we're going to see if there is a conversion factor between meters and miles. So within the same system, within different systems, we've got meters. Is there one with a meter to a mile? I don't see it. So now we're going to have to go through several different um, steps. So I see an M here, and I can go meters to feet, and then feet to miles. So that's what I'm going to go with. So we have um, meters goes on the bottom, because again, I want it to cancel. And then feet goes on the top. So in one meter, there are this many feet. So 3.2808. These guys cancel out. So now I can't stop because I have to find a conversion factor that goes from feet to miles. So that is another one that you should probably have memorized. But if you didn't know, those are the same system. So in one mile, there are this many feet. So how do I get feet to cancel? I have to put that unit on the bottom. So miles is on the top. In one mile, there are 5,280 feet. So those feet cancel. And then the only thing showing is my miles in my hours, so now I can go ahead and do the math. So I multiply the numerators together, so that's 740 times 60 times 3.2808, so this is my number on the top, and then I divide that by the product of the denominators, and so if all of these are one except that guy, I know that the product is going to be 5,280, so I'm just going to go ahead and divide it right now. And I have approximately 27.59 miles per hour. There's the other way to write that rate. 